All right, we are going to read chapter 12, and it's called That Dog Won't Hunt No More. Birmingham was like an oven. That first night, I couldn't sleep at all. Me and Bai had to share a bed, and we both were sweating like two pigs. It got so hot that Byron didn't even keep a sheet on himself to make sure I don't accidentally touch him in the night. He finally slept on the floor because he said it was a little bit cooler. When I got up, Byron was gone. I looked out of the window into the backyard, and Bai and Dad and Mr. Robert were standing under a great big tree with a dog. I went to the bathroom real quick, did my morning scratches, and then ran to, out to be with the guys. Morning, Kenny. Morning, Dad. Morning, Mr. Robert. Morning, Bai. Byron just grunted and then said, Man, you gotta quit drinking so much water. You sweated up the whole bed last night. I ain't sharing the bed with your little leaky butt. He looked at Dad. With your little leaky self again. Mr. Robert said, you boys will get used to the heat. Dad petted the dog and said, he's too old to hunt. Oh yeah, that dog won't hunt no more. He's just like me, lost the desire. Both of us got to the point where we just couldn't pull the trigger. Both of us got to be just like Joe Lewis towards the end. Remember his last fights, Daniel? Remember how Joe just walk into the ring waving that left fist like a threat? He just couldn't throw it. He just couldn't pull the trigger no more. His mind told him to do it, but his body wouldn't cooperate. That's me and Toddy. There's times at night I hear him howl, and I know he's dreaming about being back in the woods, but both of us know that's gone. Mr. Robert bent down and rubbed the dog's head. Yeah, son, in his day, this was the best coon dog in all Alabama. Used to get a hundred bucks just to stud him. Byron rubbed the old, gray, nasty-looking dog's head, too. A hundred bucks? Man. Yeah, me and Toddy saved each other's lives. Hate seeing him get so old. Judging by the way Mr. Robert looked, I bet the dog was saying the same thing about him. How'd you save his life? You ever been coon hunting? No, sir. Well, there ain't too many animals wilier or tougher than an old coon. Most people think you just chase them up a tree and pop them. But at that ain't half the story. Toddy had trailed this coon all the way out to this lake and the coon went in the water. Now, most of the time, a dog will stop right at the water. They know better than to go in. But Toddy must have just dove in after that coon. He must have been a half mile ahead of me when I heard him holler and then get real quiet. What happened? The coon got him in the water and held his head down under until he drowned him. I stopped believing this junk right there. A raccoon drowning a dog. I looked at Bai and Dad, but they were both believing what Mr. Robert was saying. Dad said, I've heard about raccoons doing that. Oh yeah, Toddy, here's living proof. Byron said, well, if he drowned, how come he ain't dead? Well, when I finally got to that lake, I seen the coon going out one way and Toddy nowhere in sight. And I knew what happened. I dove right in that water and started looking for him. It took me only a minute. I dragged him out back to shore, turned him upside down to let the water run out of him, held his mouth shut and breathed right in his nose. He kicked a couple of times and then came too. Byron said, man, that's too much. That's cool. All I could think of was that Mr. Robert was probably the only human being who'd ever put his mouth on a dog's nose. That was pretty cool. I asked Dad, when do we eat? Kenny, you're the only one who hasn't eaten already. Your mother and grandmother are in the kitchen. Go on in. I went back inside. Even before I got in, I could hear Mama saying that Birmingham wasn't anything like what she remembered. Her favorite saying has got to be, what's this, and how long's this been like that, and when did that happen, and why do you like this, and why do you do this like that, and most of all, oh, Mama. Grandma Sands thought Mama was hilarious and cracked, cracked up every time Mama got upset or worried about something that she didn't remember or didn't like. Grandma Sands must have seen The Wizard of Oz a million times because every time she laughed, it sounded just like the Wicked Witch of the West. At first, her laugh was so scary that whenever me and Joey heard it, we wanted to go get behind something or someone. But after a while, we got used to it. It took us even longer to get used to the Southern style of talking. Man, Grandma Sands and Mama would get yakking to each other, and we could only understand half of the things they said. The smell of bacon dragged me right into the kitchen. Mama, Joey, and Grandma Sands were sitting at the little skinny kitchen table yakking. Morning, Kenneth. Morning, Mama. Morning, Joey. Morning, Grandma Sands. You sleep okay? It was real hot. Joey was sitting in Mama's lap looking all drowsy. She said, I know. I was sweating all night. 
The bacon was sitting on a plate on a piece of paper towel. Mama had another piece of paper towel in her hands because all the things that Grandma Sands was telling her were making her hands get all sweaty and disgusting. I got some cereal and bread and bacon and sat at the skinny table with them. I must have interrupted something real important because as soon as I sat down, Mama acted like I'd disappeared and started asking Grandma Sands more questions. Well, what about Calla Lily Lincoln? I always wondered what she's doing. Lona, didn't I write to you about that? Uh-uh-uh. They kept on talking and kept on ooing and eyeing, and Grandma Sands kept on interrupting breakfast by scaring me and Joey with that laugh. And Mama kept on saying, Aw, oh, Mama, and she kept on having to get up and get more paper towels to wipe her hands, and most of all, she kept on talking more and more Southern style. They talked about how much trouble people were having with some white people down here. Who got married to who, how many kids this one had, how many times that one was in jail, a bunch of boring junk like that. It didn't get interesting until I noticed that Mama got real, real nervous right before she said, And what about you, Mama? Mr. Robert seems like a nice man and all, but Grandma gave that laugh and my spoon flew right out of my hand and spilled cornflakes all over the table. Mama acted like she didn't even notice, but without even looking at me, she handed one of the nasty, soaking wet pieces of paper towel and kept looking at Grandma Sands. I was wondering when we'd get to that, Grandma Sands smiled. We've been good friends since right after all, you all left for Flint. Mama was being kind of rude, and she interrupted and said, Oh, Mama, good friends, what does that mean? Malona well, Sands, what is it that's bothering you? Why don't you just say what's on your mind? Mama started wringing the neck of another piece of paper towel. I just don't understand what's going on here. How come I never knew him? Did Daddy know him? Mama said that last part like she was dropping a bomb on Grandma Sands. Grandma Sands looked at her for a minute. Mona, things are different from what they were when you left. Nearly everything changes. Your Daddy's been gone for almost 20 years. Grandma Sands had stopped smiling. Now Mr. Robert is my dearest friend. Wow, I could see where Byron learned how to say a couple of words and have people think he'd said a whole bunch more. Grandma Sands didn't yell or scream or anything, but the way she said those couple of things made everybody who heard it hey, shut their mouths and listen real hard. Even though she only told Mama that Mr. Robert was her friend, it seemed like I heard her also give my mother a real good scolding. Mama pouted and kissed the top of Joey's head. I picked up my spoon and kept eating. This was great. I'd never seen Mama act like a little kid who just got yelled at, but there she was, get serious, taking out a piece of paper towel and looking kind of embarrassed. Dad and Byron came in with Mr. Robert. Mr. Robert's going to walk us over to the lake, show us the best fishing spots for later. Joey, Kenny, you come in? Give these two some time alone to talk? Mama pushed Joey off her lap and we followed the little parade outside. The heat made me and Joey feel like we couldn't wake up. I didn't want to do any walking, but the dirty dogs made me go anyway. The only kid that acted like he was having any fun was Byron. He walked the whole way with Mr. Robert and Dad and laughed and joked with them about every stupid story they told. When we finally got back, I went to sleep under a fan. They were going to force me to go fishing with Byron and Joey the next day, and I knew I needed a ton of rest. I started to think that making Byron spend all of his summer in this heat was more punishment than even a juvenile delinquent like him deserved. But he seemed like he was having a great time. All right, I will see you for the next chapter.